I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental, thank you for joining me. There's a lot of lamals out there, so some of you may be a little bit confused about which one maybe is the right one for you, so hopefully this video can help. Stay tuned. As you might know, I'm a big fan of Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Malle. This was an important fragrance for me in my life, but also this was an important fragrance for the fragrance industry overall, because this was a bit of a game-changing fragrance. There are a multitude of special editions and flankers out there that I thought it might be useful to make this video and give you a bit of an overview of what is currently on offer and which ones I think are the best. Over the years, there have been many different special editions of La Malle and a whole host of flankers, some of which aren't available anymore. So in this video, I'll be focusing on the La Malle fragrances that I own. There's 11 of them, I think, and all of these are still available to buy. Some more than others, but we'll get into that. Of course, we have to start with the original La Malle, which was released in 1995 and took the world by storm. This changed the game, it took masculine perfumery in a completely new direction. Jean-Paul Gaultier and the perfumer Francis Kirkjian took the classical fougere style and modernized it with this. They added a lot of sweetness. So usually a fougere will utilize lavender, that's why lavender is in here, but they added vanilla and cardamom and tonka bean and just whipped up this very sweet, potent fragrance that was very attention grabbing. Everyone was wearing this. Everybody knew what this smelled like. It was a big, bold, sweet fragrance that was associated with youthfulness and partying. Often talked about as being a metrosexual fragrance, which is probably because of all the sweetness that's in here. And of course that ties into the marketing campaign as well. This is special to me because I think I started wearing this probably wasn't mid nineties. I think it was late nineties into the early noughties. So it was still an original formulation. It's changed a little bit these days, but I have many memories associated with this. It was my signature scent for probably 15 years. I was wearing this for that long. Yes. So I have many aspects of my life, many important milestones in my life that I associate with this fragrance. It's an important fragrance for me, an important fragrance for the industry. It's a fantastic DNA that I'll never tire of wearing. It's maybe a little bit overplayed though. A lot of people wear this, a lot of people recognize it. Most people have probably got an X that this reminds them of, but nevertheless, it's a great fragrance. If I was to rate this out of 10, I would give the original La Malle 9 out of 10. The next La Malle fragrance I'm going to mention was released in 2007. It is Fleur de Malle. This took that sweet unisex La Malle DNA and pushed it even further towards feminine perfumery, in my opinion. They added a lot of white florals to this, which gives it this quite indolic nature, but still mixed in with a bit of the La Malle DNA. In my opinion, this pushed the boundaries even further than the original. I don't think this could have existed without the original, but I think uh, it was a little bit more risque in terms of which gender could wear this. You could put this juice in a more feminine looking bottle, put a pink bow on it, market it to women, and no one would blink an eye. I have no problem wearing this. I really enjoy it. To me, it's more potent than the original La Malle. I get bigger performance off this one. It maybe leans a little too feminine for some guys to wear. I've heard that a lot of guys really enjoy wearing it, but it does really push the boundaries about which gender perfumes can be worn by. And I really like it for that. This is sadly now discontinued, but you can still find bottles of this on eBay. I got this very recently on eBay. I think I paid about 40 pounds for this 75 mil. So, it's not going for silly prices. Um, they're not there all the time, but if you keep an eye out, then you will find bottles of this cropping up. I do prefer the original DNA of La Malle to this one, but I still really enjoy this. It's very well done. I'd give it an eight out of 10. The next one definitely doesn't live up to its name. From 2010, it's La Malle Terrible. This was actually a really nice surprise because I hadn't heard 
anything about this fragrance, haven't heard anyone talk about it or haven't read anything about it, so I'd made the assumption that this was just one of those flankers that got lost in time because it wasn't very good, but I like it and I think the reason I like it is because it's very close to the original Lamal DNA, much closer than Fleur, but it's a little more intense. And I think that intensity is coming from some slightly tart grapefruit and pink pepper, so it gives it a really nice little kick. It's not as smooth as Lamal, but it's definitely got a bit more attitude. I think they could quite easily have got away with calling this one Lamal Intense. This, I think, has been discontinued, but I managed to buy this pretty recently on eBay here in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, and I bought this new. It was still in its original outer packaging, and it was only £40 for this 75ml, so not silly prices at all. I think I do just slightly prefer the smoother blend of the original, but this is very good. It was a pleasant surprise. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. This next one is a much fresher take on Lamal. It was released in 2013. It's Le Beau Mal. This one doesn't remind me of Lamal at all. It's kind of doing its own thing. And that thing is a sweet, minty cologne type freshness, but it's combined with musks and it feels like a lot of musks. So to me, it's a lot of mint, a lot of musk, even to the point that it's becoming quite animalic. So this is a strange type of smell to me. It's a little bit weird. It's like this minty fresh cologne combined with the animalic musk. So it's clean yet carnal. Yeah, I mean, it's not really for me. I, I don't think this is bad, but I just can't really see myself ever wanting to wear this. So I'm going to give it a six out of 10. The next one is definitely one of the most popular Lamal flankers. In 2015, nightclubs everywhere were smelling of this. It's Ultramal. For me, this is quite a departure from the original Lamal DNA. It's doing something completely different. It's all about juicy pear and rich vanilla. And this has a lot of sweetness. If you don't like piercingly sweet fragrances, you may not like Ultramal. This is known as a go-to clubbing fragrance. Many people will include this in lists of club bangers. And it's because it's so sweet and fun and noticeable. I think it's probably less nuanced than a lot of other Lamal flankers and Lamal itself. This is just an unapologetic blast of sweetness, but it's great. It's fun. It's full of energy. It grabs attention. So I can see why it's a really popular fragrance. I really enjoy this, but I still do prefer the original Lamal DNA. So if I was going to rate this out of 10, I'd go an 8. Into 2016, and this one is a brighter, fresher take on Lamal. It's Lamal Au Fraiche. This is a brighter, fresher take on Lamal, and it definitely has more of that Lamal DNA in it than Ultramal does. It adds some Neroli and even more mint. And it's not as potent as Lamal, but this works so well as a summer scent and it also has a good modern feel to it and I get a little bit of bubblegum sweetness in here which I really enjoy. I find it to be bright, uplifting. It reminds me of summer because for the last few years I've been wearing this throughout the summer although I think you could easily wear this all year round. It's a bright, sweet and airy feel-good scent that I rate 8 out of 10. The next one is another 2016 release. This is La Mal Essence de Parfum. Again, this one is a definite move away from the Lamal DNA. It's more of an oriental fragrance. It has a sweet richness rather than a minty freshness. It's very smoothly blended. It focuses mainly on cardamom, vanilla, leather. As a result, I think this one works better in cooler temperatures. So for me, this is gonna wear really nicely in the autumn. Not as much projection as Lamal or some of its flankers, but I find it to be quite refined and sophisticated in its subtlety. I really enjoy this and we're going to rate it 8 out of 10. The next fragrance is from 2018 and this is La Malle in the Navy. This is the brand's take on a blue aquatic fragrance, which is a very popular genre of fragrance at the moment, which is why everyone's having a go. And this and the next two in the line seem to go a little more generic, I think. 
there is a, a, a distinct lack of creativity. This one has an aquatic feel and a bubblegum sweetness, so I get reminded of something like Invictus Aqua. It's obviously not the same as that, but definitely along those lines. Whilst it's not that unique or memorable, it's actually a pretty good take on this genre of fragrance. I wore this through the summer and I was surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. It's not amazing, it's not mind-blowing, but I thought I was gonna be more underwhelmed with this, but I actually quite enjoyed it. It's just you're gonna have smelled a lot of other things that smell very similar to this. But it's nicely done, easy to wear, mass appealing. I'm gonna give this one seven out of 10. The next one is a 2019 release. This is called Le Beau, not to be confused with Le Beau Mal, which is an earlier release, two completely different fragrances. And for the first time in 24 years, he's decided to cover his bits up. Again, this one continues down a bit more of a generic path. It doesn't have much of a connection with the original Le Mal, so we don't get that lovely sweet minty pop in the opening. This is a woody type fragrance DNA that I've definitely smelled before. It doesn't smell very unique at all to me. It has a depth and a richness, which is nice. It even has a little bit of creaminess, which is maybe coming from the coconut note that's in here. Like in the Navy, it's very pleasant to wear. I enjoy it. It just doesn't excite me. There's just not enough here that, that really excites me. I don't hate this, it's not bad, it's just not really, really good. 7 out of 10. I'm sorry to say this 2020 fragrance was a weak release for me. It's La Mal Aviator. It's not repulsive, it's just so indistinct. There's just nothing exciting about this fragrance at all. It was a wasted release in my opinion. Look at early releases, for example, the original La Mal came out, all guns blazing and changed the game. Fleur pushed the boundaries even further. Ultra Mal is an unapologetic, sweet club banger, and Au Fresh is a lovely summer take on the La Mal DNA, but this is just, just a bit boring. Also, I don't get great performance. I don't hate it, I just don't wear it. Six out of 10. From one extreme to the other, Jean-Paul Gaultier have redeemed themselves, thankfully, with this latest release. It is La Mal Le Parfum. Thankfully, this one gets the line back on track. I think this is a really good release from Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's not a game changer like the original was, but it's just a really nicely done fragrance. It connects to the original. We get a little bit of that La Mal DNA and then into the heart we've got this beautiful vanilla iris which smells refined and sophisticated. So this is kind of like a grown-up and a more modern take on La Mal. For those of us who used to wear La Mal back in the day, all those years ago and have since got a few years older, I think this is a good choice because we have that nostalgia for the original in here, but we also have a slightly more mature fragrance, a more grown up fragrance, a more modern fragrance. I think the DNA of this is pretty on trend with how fragrances are smelling these days. No one's gonna think that you smell dated. I think it's mass appealing. I think this is a real crowd pleaser. I think this is uh, rich and warming and comforting, but enough playfulness to really make it still fun to wear. It's not a grown up, boring, mature fragrance at all. I think it just takes that original DNA, modernizes it, keeps the fun, but adds a little bit more sophistication. Because of the richness in this one, I'd say it's suitable for cooler temperatures. So I think I'm gonna be wearing this a lot over the next few months in the autumn and the winter. It's such an easy wear. It could be worn as a daytime signature scent. It would work as a date night scent because it's got enough sensuality to it with the richness of the iris and the vanilla. It could be a formal occasion scent. I just think it is a really good release from JPG. So nine out of 10. So to sum up, my favourites are Le Mal and Le Parfum, which I gave both a 9 to, and Eau Fraiche and Ultra Mal, which I gave 8 to. I can wear Le Mal whenever I'm in the mood, Eau Fraiche when it's warm, Le Parfum when it's cooler, Ultra Mal when it's party time. I think these four fragrances are the best of the line and they will have you covered for all seasons, all occasions. If you were going to push me and ask me if you were to buy just one and own only one, which would it be? It's not a difficult choice. It would have to be the one that started everything off, Lamal. 
Okay, so there you go. Just my thoughts and opinions on the fragrances from the Lamal lineup that I own. Overall, I think it's a good line. I think there's some great fragrances. Yeah, it's let down by three of those later releases that just go a little generic and are a little bit boring, if I'm honest. But they've redeemed themselves with the latest release of La Mala Parfum, which I think is a very good fragrance. I'm looking forward to what they're going to come out with next. Hopefully they don't go back to those boring mainstream type DNAs. Uh, I think we can do better. Come on, remember Jean-Paul Gaultier. Remember what you stand for. You, you want to excite people and you want to create fragrances that are attention grabbing and a little bit risky and push the boundaries a little bit. Let's not have any more boring releases. Let's, let's keep up with the good releases and uh, follow La Mala Parfum with another good one next. Let me know which Lamal fragrances you own and which ones are your favourites. Have you got all of them? Are you a collector? Have you got all the special editions and all the earlier flanker releases that are now discontinued and you can't get hold of? I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of those. Maybe there are some gems that we should be picking up for quite a lot of money probably on eBay, but uh, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. If you're a hardcore Lamal collector, let me know which you think has been the best release of all 50 odd releases. I think that'd be really interesting to know. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you were thinking of purchasing a Lamal fragrance, I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching. It's always appreciated. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.